The characteristics of living things geared loosely towards the Irish Leaving Cert syllabus. This rhyme helps me remember the five characteristics Oscar, Never, Eats, Red, Radishes. The five characteristics are organisation, nutrition, excretion, response and reproduction. Organisation. The simplest unit of life, the most basic unit of life, is the cell. Some organisms are so tiny that they are only composed of one cell. They are unicellular. When you have groups of similar cells and they are modified to carry out a particular role, well then these are known as tissues. Groups of tissues can form organs. Groups of organs work together as systems. Nutrition. This is the way in which living things or organisms obtain and use their food. Living things break down food to provide energy, energy that fuels their metabolic reactions. They also need food for the provision of raw materials, those materials necessary to repair damaged cells and tissues and also to grow. Some organisms can make their own food and they are known as autotrophs. Plants are autotrophs because they can photosynthesize. Some bacteria are autotrophs because they can make their food by using energy released from chemical reactions and you'll meet these in the nitrogen cycle. If organisms cannot make their own food, well then they're heterotrophs. Animals, some bacteria and fungi would be examples of heterotrophs. These organisms have to take in food made by other organisms. Excretion. This is the removal of metabolic waste. Metabolic waste is waste that was generated due to the metabolic reactions carried out by that living thing. The removal of such waste is very important. If it's allowed to build up, it could cause death or serious disease. Removal of such waste maintains homeostasis, constant internal conditions or environment. This is a good point to introduce the definition for metabolism. Metabolism is the sum of all the chemical reactions taking place within a living organism. There are two categories of metabolic reactions, catabolic and anabolic. And just remember crap, it helps you come up with an example for both. Catabolic reactions, just think of a catastrophe. These are reactions where large, complex molecules are broken into smaller, simpler molecules with the release of energy and give respiration as an example. Then we have the other category of metabolic reactions, anabolic reactions. Those reactions in which smaller, simple molecules are used to build larger, more complex molecules with the input of energy and photosynthesis is an example. I also linked homeostasis with excretion. Homeostasis means maintaining a constant internal environment, like maintaining pH or maintaining body temperature. The next characteristic is response. So living things respond to stimuli. They respond to changing conditions. This enables them to adapt. Our sense organs and our nervous system are amazing at picking up and responding to changes in our environment. It's not just animals, plants can respond as well. They can open and close their stomata, they can grow towards light, etc. Then we have reproduction. All living things must be able to reproduce or else they would simply die off. Animals reproduce by means of sexual reproduction using two parents. Plants reproduce asexually and sexually. Asexual means one parent only. Some fungi can produce spores and bacteria reproduce asexually. By knowing those five characteristics of living things, you can define life. Life means the possession of all the characteristics of life, organization, nutrition, excretion, response and reproduction. Knowing the characteristics of living things will allow you to argue if something is living or non-living. And this is very important for when you encounter viruses. Oscar never eats red radishes. Another definition we encounter is the continuity of life. This means that all living things arise from other living things of the same type. So living things don't just come out of thin air, they have to come from other similar living things. A famous scientist, Rudolf Virchow, coined the phrase that cells arise from other similar cells. And mitosis, that form of nuclear division and cytokinesis, proves this. You'll learn about this at a later stage. For a very long time, scientists believed in spontaneous generation, that life could arise from inanimate objects, that crocodiles came from rotting logs, etc. Indeed, a very famous scientist, Jean-Baptiste van Helmont, he believed and actually wrote a recipe for the generation of mice, a sweaty shirt mixed in with some wheat grains in a container for 21 days. This is really a must-watch documentary. It's by the BBC. It's The Cell and the Hidden Kingdom. If you're interested in all of these scientists like Van Helmont, Virchow, Louis Pasteur, all of these guys, please watch this. It's amazing. So at the end of all this, make sure you can define life. You can list the five characteristics of living things or of life, that you can define metabolism, that you can define the continuity of life. 
and remember, Oscar never eats red radishes. As always, this does not replace your textbook. The only way to revise is to do past papers, use your own book, and listen to your teacher's guidance always. All of the icons are from the Noun Project. I'm a pro member, but I still want to recognize the artists. They're listed in the credits at the end of the video.